First, thanks for the invite to come here tonight. Um, as uh, it just said, I'm the president of the Orleans Fly Fishers Club, but I, I'm also president of the Gulf Coast Council of the FFI, and I think that's probably because nobody else wanted to be president, and they made me do it. But uh, you have a couple of uh, a couple of uh, club members that are uh, on the council: Chris Williams um, and Ben Roussel. But uh, I want to just talk a little bit about the uh, the Gulf Coast Classic that's coming up uh, May 4th, 5th, and 6th at uh, Gulf State Park in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Uh, this is going to be a great event. Uh, you know, with with all of the things that we've been through with COVID and stuff like that, and people couldn't get together and all, we're finding that people really want to come back together again and do the things that we, we did for a long time as fly fishermen and get together demo tie, cast, fish, and stuff like that. And um, this event really kind of encapsulates all those things. Uh, we'll have a, a, it officially kicks off at daybreak on Thursday morning, right Chris? Yep, the tournament starts 5.39 a.m. I think that's, that's Thursday, with the- Thursday, May 4th. Yep, so we're gonna have a CPR tournament it's going to be a mixed bag tournament. Um, anyone who registers for the classic event will automatically be eligible to fish in the tournament. So, you know, we can't have any sandbaggers coming in that just want to fish the tournament. You have to be a part of the uh, the classic event to uh, to fish the tournament. Uh, we have some great prizes uh, for the uh, for the winning anglers. Uh, there will be an adult division and a and a kids division. Um, age slips my mind 16 and under I believe it's under 18 under 18 or is the kids division so for the adult division whoever uh, catches the most species uh, and registers those uh, the the prize will be an Orvis recon rod which is weight Orvis recon and a matching pro series line from Orvis and then for the first and second place uh when is the division of Bahio Sunglasses is also donating um, a gift card for that person to choose any pair of Bahios that they want. And if uh, if you're not familiar with Bahio Sunglasses, you need to familiarize yourself with them. They're great sunglasses. Um, and then in the, in the children's division, uh, the winner of that division will win um, an Orvis Clearwater combo kit in an eight weight. Uh, as well as the first and second place uh, finishes will get uh, Bahio gift cards. Uh, we're probably going to have a, a consolation prize. We haven't decided what that's going to be. We have a catch as an Allen reel set aside that's going to be drawn randomly for any one participant to win one of the top. Okay, so an Allen reel. Uh, but the the uh, the fishing tournament kind of kicks it off, and then uh, that evening, um, the FFI board of directors, the national board of directors, that's something we're very excited about. They're coming together for the first time for a live board of directors meeting since 2019. They're going to do it at our event. So, all the all the big dogs that you hear about at FFI all the time, they're going to be there. Patrick Berry, the CEO, will be there. Dave Peterson, the chairman of the board. All the officers, uh, the heads of most of the committees, the fly tying committee, the casting committee, uh, the education committee will all be there as well. Uh, then the the expo itself kicks off on Friday morning. Uh, with you know a few introductory remarks, we have as of right now we have over 20 uh, demonstration fly tires, uh, including uh, Dr. Ed Lash, who's the the guru of of uh, deer hair. Uh, fly tying. He's going to be there. Jerry Coviello, who at one time was the head of the uh, fly tying committee, will be there doing some uh, demonstration tying. Uh, Fred Haney, who many of you know, will be conducting a workshop uh, on on tying his mono shrimp. Uh, there's a couple of paid workshops, but you can you can do that by uh, going onto the website and clicking the link to register for the for the classic. In the past, you know, we've 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 had small events like uh, the last 
Last year and two years ago before <coughs> COVID, we had the Sweetwater Classic in Macomb at Percy Quinn State Park. And it was a small scale event. And, and, and it's always been well attended, but we've been talking as a group, the council has been talking as a group about expanding and having a bigger event and something that, that really kind of draws from across the council. So we started looking for a venue and uh, our, our, uh, our treasurer, Donald Dem, lives in Foley and he says, we need to check out the Gulf State Park venue. And it is one really nice top-notch place. It's, I think it's been open for two years. Um, and there's, a, there's an affordable housing option as well. There are two dormitories there, which we have procured for the event. Uh, anyone who registers for the, uh, uh, for the classic will have the opportunity to go online and sign up for room. Rooms are 50 bucks a night. Now, it's bunks, but it's, it's like, they're fancy bunks. Uh, I'm going to date myself a little bit. You, you guys remember the, the old sleeper rail cars that had the curtains that pulled across them? Each one of those, each one of those has that. It's got its own little private light in there, so nobody's going to have the lights on in the middle of the dormitory waking you up. Uh, all of the uh, all of the uh, the shower facilities uh, and bathrooms are, are individual private, so it's not going to be like you know high school gym where everybody showers together or anything like that. So there's privacy as well. Uh, we uh, there have been a number of folks from from Red Stick, and I, I'm I'm very pleased that have volunteered to help. So what happens is when you volunteer to help, there's a form that you can go on online, fill it out, or you can tell Chris or somebody else, and 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 we'll get all of those folks signed up. But when you you get free admission, admission for the for the whole event for the weekend is twenty dollars. So that's one of the best deals going. Uh, we, we were offering volunteers first shots at the rooms, but it's gone public now, so I don't know how many rooms are, are, are left at the place. But like I said, they're $50 a night. We'll feed our volunteers lunch both days on, on, uh, on Friday and Saturday. We have a, a ton of really nice items that are being donated uh, to auction off and raffle off. Uh, in particular, we, uh, you know, all of our fly tires will donate <coughs> one or two really nice boxes of flies uh, to be raffled off. But we, uh, No Wake Outfitters in New Orleans is donating uh, uh, a new canoe pursuit kayak to be raffled off. It's a $1,500 kayak. So, we either do a gamblers draw or something like that. Really nice, boat. <coughs> really nice boat. Um, we have that. Um, we're going to also be auctioning or raffling a, another recon rod because Orbis has been very, uh, very kind to uh, donate to help us um, be successful in, in our fundraising efforts. So what happens uh, just with the council? Uh, let me tell you a little bit about. People say, well, where's the money go? Uh, we try to support the, the clubs that are in the council. There are 14 clubs in the council right now. Um, we try to support educational conservation efforts and stuff like that. Uh, Eastern Shore Fly Fishers in, Mo in the Mobile area, they have a tournament uh, called the Triple Tail Classic. We donate to that. They, it's, it's a fly fishing only for Triple Tail tournament, and it's all tag, catch, and release. So uh, it really helps the, uh, the, the Gulf Shores Research Lab to learn more about that particular fish. Over the years, had, there hadn't been a lot of uh, research done on that. Uh, you know, we try to support efforts to uh, help with legislation in different states <coughs> in the area. Uh, in Louisiana, we push a lot on the speckle trout, the redfish stuff that, that you guys hear about all the time. But uh, the event's going to be a lot of fun. And then on Saturday night, uh, Saturday evening, uh, the expo will end at 3.30. And at 4.30, we're going to host the Fly Fishing Film Tour. Hadn't been down here in a couple of in a couple of years, so I don't know if, if any of you folks had ever attended the ones that they used to do at Orpus. But it, it's, it's a lot of fun. It really is. It's a $25 ticket. And one of the attendees that buys a ticket to that will have a shot 
New Orleans selling 200 tickets total. One of the attendees would have a shot at winning a Sage R8 uh, eight weight fly rod, which is a $1,200 fly rod, I believe. Something like that, $1,195. So, but just the films themselves are just, are, they're just phenomenal. They really are, they're great. All the fly fishing films from all over the world. Um, we're gonna have a lot of great seminars, conservation round table, um, people talking about, uh, you know, techniques for targeting fish along the Gulf Coast. Uh, and a Captain Chip Smith from Pensacola, Destin area, he's gonna be talking about targeting, uh, targeting tarpon along the beaches of the Gulf Coast. He fishes for them all the time. With that, um, we're gonna, I believe we have a, a, a session on, on red-eye bass, which is uh, an Alabama species. I think they target over there, so fishing some of them. Uh, but a whole bunch of things surf fishing along the Gulf Coast. We're gonna have two seminars where we actually have guides on, we're gonna bring a skiff in. They're gonna get up on the skiff, it'll be outside. And uh, they're gonna talk about uh, you know, fishing from a skiff, skiff etiquette, what you wanna do, what you don't wanna do, uh, best techniques and things like that. So a lot of information there. It's all listed out uh, if, if you go to register for the different seminars and stuff like that. Space is limited on all the seminars. Like, you know, we have some in the classrooms where you may only have 20 spots. So I urge people, go online, register for the class, sign up for the seminars if there's something that really, really tickles your fancy or that you really want to see. Uh, because once they're filled, that's it. We're not, you know, we're not going to have, like, people all packed in a room like sardines. We know how many seats we have in each thing and stuff like that. And of course, the conservation hall is a big room, and they'll have demo tires in there, and and uh, some different stuff going on in there. But uh, there are some really great seminars that are going to be happening. But like I said, we still need volunteers. We have some volunteers signed up. Uh, thank you to the Red Stick Club because you, you guys are leading the pack with the number of volunteers. But I know some of y'all have over the over the, the, the months have promised that you're going to sign up and have it. So. Let's get on the stick and do it. Questions? Do you have to attend the tournament in order to go to the film show? No, that's a separate ticket. Could you repeat yeah. the question? Do you have to, do you have to uh, attend the expo to go to the film tour show? No, you don't have to. That, that's a separate ticket. If, you, you sign up to get into the expo. If you want to go to the F3T showing, you got to buy that as a separate ticket. The links are on the website, though. There are some there are some flyers back there. It has a speckled trout on it and kind of purple and gold. Grab those at, if on the way out if you look need if you need more information because uh, there's a link to the website that you can go on. Go on there. It's all there. Yes, sir. The film. How long? It's, you said it starts in the evening. How long will that run? Uh, it it runs about three hours total. Uh, and it's a collage of film, or it, it's it's a number of films that they follow one behind the other. They they they'll run. It'll run for about an hour and a half, then they take an intermission. They have a lot of a lot of nice swag and and, and uh, raffle prizes that they do that F three T. And actually, we found out this past week that two of the people that have entered a film into it and also have produced another film are going to actually be there at, at the, the film tour. Uh, it's a production company called Dorsal, I believe. And uh, they're, they're located in, in the South Alabama area. So we're excited about them coming because they, they said they're going to bring some nice prizes to donate as well. Where is, where is the website? I haven't been to Foley in a long time. Is this on? Is this headquartered on Mobile Bay? Is it on the Gulf? Where it's it? it's in Gulf Shore State Park. Oh. Okay. So if you come, you know, if you come down, what is it, 59, I believe, that, that runs through Foley, you go down there, and it's right off of there. Um, and uh, back east, when, when you get to the Gulf. yes, east, yeah. yeah. It's right before you get to the beach. On you, you come over that that, that bridge that crosses yes. the waterway, and it's on the left side. Uh, let me talk a little bit uh, about the fishing opportunity too while we're here. Uh, there's a there's a map of the entire fishing area. It's pretty expansive, Chris, I think. But on the property itself, there's 600 acre Lake Shelby, and it's a brackish lake. So Donald Dam, who lives over there, when when uh, 
he talked about the place and said, I want to come see it. So, we're, you know, we look at all of the, the campus and everything. And the buildings are beautiful, and there's a restaurant right on site, so you don't have to go very far to, to eat. Um, so I said, okay, fly fishermen, show me the water. I want to see the water. What's it like? So we, we drive the, like from the, where the, the conservation hall is. It's about a half a mile, three quarters of a mile to, to like where the big open bank is. So we walk up, beautiful lake, gorgeous lake. Walk up and we're standing there talking from me to you, a bass about that big swim. Well, I said, geez, look at there, a bass. And he says, this is, he says, this is my home waters. This is where I fish. Bass, bluegills, uh, occasionally he, he, the, the crappie too. So we're talking for a minute, I turn, and from me to you, there's a redfish about this big that's swimming by. So one of the guys that has done the promotion uh, for us with the artwork and, and the flyers, we're over there meeting with him, and, and he's, he pulls out his phone, and he's showing me videos of, of fishing in the lake with like schools of redfish just blowing up in it. Uh, and then right across the road, there's a boardwalk from the park that crosses over the, the beach highway is, is the beach. You can fish to surf. And in early May, you have pompano and ladyfish and redfish and speckled trout and Spanish mackerel and all kinds of stuff that they catch right off the beach. Here. So uh, the fishing opportunities are really, really good. So you know, decide what you're going to bring. You're going to need to get an Alabama fishing license if, if, if you're not an Alabama resident. You're going to have to get an out-of-state Alabama fishing license. We suggest, I think there's like a seven-day that's fairly reasonable. I think that's probably the best option, yeah. And we did, with the boundaries, we expanded them so they do stretch a little into Florida. If any of you are <laughs> fishing the tournament as part of it, you <coughs> can't make it over to, say, Johnson Beach on the other side of the line. Uh, so make sure if you go into Florida, you also have yeah, Florida. So depending license. where you're fishing, just make Florida sure. sells a three-day license that's... Seventeen dollars or eleven dollars, something, something like that. Seventeen. Seventeen sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what was the boundaries again? So the the boundaries are a little bit crazy. Effectively, for Mobile Bay, the Pensacola Bay is what we're going to allow because we do understand there's folks who aren't staying in the park proper. You know, I'll be staying in Perdido Key on the Florida side. Not that I'm sadly, unfortunately, not eligible to fish in my own tournament. But if I'm fishing, it's going to be on that side. A few other people will be doing the same. Yeah, it's the roughly about around where Dolphin Island is, uh, close to that. Yeah, effectively Dolphin Island to Pensacola Bay. So for the purposes of people coming to this, kind of the Johnson Beach area in Perdido Key. And then it goes up, up and up into Mobile uh, Bay and I think some of that, some of those feeder rivers up in the area. Right, pretty, pretty much we drew the lines north from there. So if you wanted to fish for the freshwater species, you could do so north of the intercoastal waterway as well. But there's, there's if, you go, if you go to the website and look at it, it yeah. that's all there. It, it should be linked. I think there's a PDF link on the mixed bag page of the website. Yep. Yeah. But the, yeah, the species we're challenging people to catch I mean, we have bass, bluegill, fresh and saltwater catfish, pompano, cobia, tarpon, mackerel, jack, snapper. The, it's a pretty wide-ranging list, and there's also uh, five what we call wild, wild cards, cards. Five wild cards, uh, one of which is being set up to be filled uh, by participating in an associated trash collection event. So we're working with Clean Horizon. I, clean, I think it's Clean Horizons, yeah. The name of a group uh, out of Gulf Shores that does these big beach cleanup events. So they're going to provide us with effectively uh, 100 reusable kind of collection sacks. And we're still working out what the prize will be, but they're going to show up for the actual tournament announcement. And we'll do a trash weigh-in, and there will be a separate prize for whoever collects the most trash that I'm working out with So it'll... it'll also help you know with cleanup conservation efforts along the Gulf Coast because it just amazes me how some folks just throw trash on the ground and there's a garbage can right there. I, I just don't get it. I, I will say unrelated to our event, but that southeast in general. I was illegally parked last time I was in the Everglades. The game warden did not care. He just wanted to make sure I wasn't covering. <laughs> he told me outright, he's like, just move your car, you're fine, but please tell me you're not throwing any trash on the ground. 
That's good. Yeah, and I'm glad to hear that. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Any other questions? I assume everything had to be caught on a fly rod, or does it matter? It's all fly rod. Yep. Fly fish is in there. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Everything on a fly ride, yes. And, and we will have a captain's meeting either on Zoom or Facebook Live or something of that nature on yeah. the day prior to the event. So we'll make sure everybody who's interested is aware of that link, and that way if you guys do have questions, uh, you know, we can address them then as well. You also want to keep an eye on the, um, on the Gulf Coast Council's uh, web page and the Facebook page because uh, we're going to do a fly fishing Lake Shelby thing that Donald Dem is going to do. It'll be kind of like a live broadcast. He'll talk a little bit about, about flies that work, um, you know, fish that you can target, uh, just some techniques and stuff like that. But, you know, probably one of those 45 minutes or an hour. And, and Donald does a great job with that kind of stuff. He's a, he's a good promo guy. Yes. It's, it's probably going to, uh, it's probably going to be a combination of a, YouTube Live and Facebook Live. That's what they said they were going. I'm, I'm not the I'm not the IT guy. They 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 know what uh, how they're going to do it. So there'll be more information coming along with that pretty soon. And it'll be it'll be like one evening or something like that. Probably within the next two weeks. We figured maybe about a week out. It would be a lot of fun to uh, to do that. And you know, folks can you know type questions in for Donald and stuff like that. Um, so, are there like, can you have a canoe or kayak on that lake? Yes, okay. you can actually have a power boat on the lake too. Uh, you might want to check the park rules if there, I'm not sure if there are, are any um, horsepower things on it, but yes, you, you can have canoe or kayak. Actually, Justin Lang, who's my boss at Note Wake Outfitters in New Orleans, uh, is going to bring his kayak rental fleet down. He's got six, either six or seven uh, new canoe kayaks that, that we ran out through the shop. So we'll have those there. If someone wants to rent it, first come, first serve, you know, uh, we'll have those available to rent as well. This, you know, unless it's, it's super windy, this lake is like, it's like a perfect kayak lake. It really is. It's 600 acres, you know, you can, you can get around it, you can kind of get away from people to fish and stuff like that. There's like a little feeder creek that goes into another smaller lake in it. But there's a, there's a lot of fish in here. Though this is not with regard to the classic, don't you in New Orleans have a seminar coming up, fly casting seminar? We have we have a fly casting clinic tentatively scheduled for Saturday morning at City Park in New Orleans. There's a there's a map on our website that shows where it is, unless the rain gets us. Then if that's the case, we'll probably postpone it to the 29th. Okay. Announce that then perhaps there. Okay. The New Orleans Fly Fishers has a, a we basically call it a beginner's fly uh, casting clinic that we're going to do Saturday morning at City Park in New Orleans. You can check out our website for directions and stuff like that. It'll be from 9 to noon. We'll do, uh, you know, for folks that have, we're getting a lot of traffic for folks that have never thrown a fly rod before that want to pick it up and, and we'll pieces of real basics, you know, like the pickup, uh, probably the roll cast, and, uh, you know, maybe just, uh, you know, simple how do you flatten your loop out and stuff like that. Um, we'll have between four and six folks that'll be there to help uh, with the instruction. And then at the end, we're going to have, we'll have, we'll have a casting contest. We take hula hoops, put it 30, 40, and 50 feet. You get one false cast to, at 30 feet. If, you, if your line hits the ground on your, on your back cast, that's it, you're done. Two false casts at 40 feet, three false casts at 50 feet. And the, 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 we're hoping that we have a lot of kids show up. We did at our, at our, uh, at our thing, in, in, uh, we did our expo in New Orleans in January. But we hope we have kids come, up, come because we'll have an adult, a kids division. And the winners of those two divisions will each get a $25 gift card to No Wake Out Fitters so they can get go buy flies or fly lines or whatever they want. That'll get them started. Yeah, and the volunteers at the uh, Classic, what are they, what are they, what they expect to be doing? Uh, we'll do a little bit of basic setup at tables and stuff like that. It's not going to be a lot. 
the more people we get, I, I think probably all told in the course of a day, we may tie you up for two hours over the course of the day total. You know, some in the morning, some in the evening. Uh, we'll need folks throughout the day to help with selling uh, raffle tickets, um, you know, taking registrations and admissions at the desk, um, just kind of answering questions and stuff like that. Um, but no, uh, no, have, no, what I call really heavy lifting. You know, we've got some tables we'll set up, you know, and the, the whole council will be there. There's eight or nine of us. So we may say, hey, okay, we need these tables set up in this configuration. <coughs> the, uh, the first thing that we'll have to set up for actually will be on Thursday. Uh, so you can kind of, you could actually get to the dorms Thursday. And then we got a, we got a, a, a good favor from the, the, the folks at Gulf State Park. First they said we couldn't get until noon. Now we can get the key at 9 a.m. So the first day we'll set up for the FFI board meeting. It'll probably be you know, like a, just the U-shaped tables and some chairs for whoever wants to attend the board meeting. The board meeting, it'll be a lot of FFI business, probably three to four hours long. I geek out on stuff like that, but <laughs> it's, just, it's just me. I want to know what's going on. And um, so, you know, we're, we're hoping to only, you know, one or two hours a day from all of our volunteers if we get enough folks there. That's why I, I've been going around last week I, I, for the Kasachi meeting. I, I zoomed in with them and, and talked to them about the same things that we're talking about tonight. Um, I beat my, my folks on the head at the New Orleans Club all the time. You need to get out here. I tell them, you know, you know, if you guys are wrong, do you know how bad that makes me look? You know, so I, I try to guilt them up. But uh, you know, we, I, I don't have an exact head count right now, but I think all told we have 22, I heard. I think 22 volunteers from everywhere, maybe. I, I think that includes the board itself right now. That maybe it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we've, we can, we can, board and I think there's around 20, 22 uh, yeah. for anybody who is considering it. Uh, Go yeah. sign up. Yeah, you can actually on the volunteer form select the days that you're available. Yeah. So if you know you're intending to sign up for one of the pay courses that's going on, you know, make sure you're not checking that morning or that afternoon, or just if you don't even want to be there for. Or if you sign up for it right on the form, hey, I'd like to do this. Then look, we're we're an easy bunch to work with. You know, we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna slave drive everybody and, and say ah no 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 you got to be over here doing this. Um, you know, we. We pretty much anticipate that the board itself is going to do most of the heavy lifting on this stuff, and, and uh, so we just appreciate anybody that, that really comes out and helps them. It's going to be a great time too. It's a great time of year to be over in Gulf Shores. It's 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 warm, but it's not super hot yet. Uh, I don't think we we have to worry about any tropical weather the first weekend of May. So um, you know we don't have to worry about getting blown out or anything like that. So, any other questions? What kind of power boats are people bringing it in? Or is this a kayak? Uh, well, there's a, like right on the, where the, the big beach area of the, uh, of the lake is, there's a boat launch there where, you know, people bring flat boats into it. And, uh, the day I was there, it was, it was, it was, in, it was in the winter, but uh, I've seen videos of people that, that they put bay boats in there. I mean, how deep is this thing? It drops off pretty quick from the shore. You can probably wade out this deep. So you can safely run a power boat. It's not shallow. No. Okay. No, it's not shallow. It's not like the water right here where you go. No, where you're going to run over everything that you know. That's not, no. It 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 drops down nice and good. And it's it, the lake itself is pretty wide open. It's not like you have tree stumps in it and stuff like that. It's got a sandy bottom in it. A lot of grass along the shorelines, but there's 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 bank fishing as well. There's ample opportunity to fish the banks, and then of course you can always, if you want, you can always launch one of the public boat launches and go out and fish Mobile Bay or fish the Gulf. Other questions? You said one of the categories is the most different type of species. We have five wild card species, so. Uh, 
Chris, why don't you talk? You, you're my, you're my so, guru on them. So the way we set it up is we created a list of 25 different species along with five wild cards because the fact is you don't ever really know what you're going to catch down there. My nephew caught a permit in that area last fall, so lots of random things show up. Um, but of those 25 species plus the wild cards, they're all equal footing, whether you catch a bluegill or a tarpon. So whoever has the highest total counts at the end of the two and a half days, that's how we're determining a winner. So is that the highest total count of species? Or total, total count of species, correct. Doesn't matter what size. Yeah, one tarpon, one bluegill, one bass, one red fish. So whoever can catch the, yeah, the largest diversity you know, is how you win this. So I'm going to bring my 11 weight for those bluegills. <laughs> But I, I, uh, I was telling you about the, the, the guy who lives down there that, that did all of our artwork for us. He was showing me a, a, a video from the previous spring, which is you know about the time that we'll be there. And he said, man, I'm working one day. And my brother called me and says, you got to get the 12 weight. Get down here. And they walk out on the beach, and there's just like this tarpon blowing up rafts of mullet everywhere, like right within casting distance to the beach. I was sitting at the restaurant in that Hilton last August and watched two of them jump. You know, both just sitting there on the balcony for an hour right offshore. So, yeah, there are legitimate shots at Tarpon. Permit, Either that's exciting. I had permit have been showing up more and more. Um, There's sheephead, redfish, yeah. speckled trout, you know, uh, white trout, sand trout, you know. 25, I think 25 species? So yeah, we have 25 plus the wild cards. In the so five. I will, I will say if the surf is down, quite honestly, it's that's probably some of the more interesting fishing you guys can do if you haven't surf fished with a fly rod before. Uh, just like that, within that first trough, you may have a 36 inch redfish, you may have pompano, the juvenile permit are now running with those schools of pompano occasionally. Within that second trough, you may have shark, Spanish mackerel, big bull red, or bigger bull reds, drum. You know, my father actually bait fishing landed two juvenile cobia. You know, just with a small surf rod from shore down there. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna so, say a couple of years ago, my wife and I, we we had gone for a long weekend in Destin, and the, it's it's the same type of beach. You know, you have you have in when the when the surf is down. I go out one morning at six o'clock. Got my nine weight. Maybe from me to you, there's two cobia. Yep. Juvie's there about that big. Mm -hmm. Throw it the first one, man, he hooks up, and the other one's following him all over the place. I, and I landed him too. It, it, I mean, it was, it, was a, it, it was one heck of a fun fight yeah. from the beach. Someone just landed a great white shark off that beach actually a week or so ago. That's <coughs> around, right? So, so don't get, I mean, look, I don't want to see any of you guys out there fishing when it's at the AD. <laughs> Other questions? Well, I hope to see most of you at the Classic. If you have any questions about volunteering, uh, you know, you, Chris is available to answer questions. Uh, go to the website, there's a ton of information there. Uh, you can volunteer, the forms of volunteers are on there. But if anything, we want you guys to come to the class and enjoy yourself and, and participate and be a part of it. I appreciate the opportunity to come speak with you guys tonight. Um, and as I said, between now and, and uh, May 5th, uh, you know, let us know if you have any questions. It's close. It's about three and a half weeks away, four weeks away. So, again, thank you so much. I appreciate it.